So I'd like us now to look at one case study of how this is done. And the case study that I selected is the base of the Danian stage. And the reason I selected the base of the Danian stage is because it also means the base of the Paleogene, which means the base of the Cenozoic. And it's an interesting case study because we go from a world that looks something like this with dinosaurs and everything to after this boundary, a world that looks much more, I don't want to say modern, but definitely where dinosaurs are, have disappeared. They're succeeded by birds. And the rise of mammals is one of the big story of the Cenozoic. So it's very important for us to understand this particular boundary. And the Cretaceous was definitely a very strange world and the end of, of the Cretaceous led to the disappearance of many species. So in this case here you see a paleogeographic map of the Cretaceous and the point I want to make is that many of the land species disappeared at the end of the Cretaceous including flying reptiles, ammonites, dinosaurs, but also many smaller creatures like benthic foraminifers or planktic for aminifers, as we will see. So for such an important boundary, surely the definition must be awesome. So let's look at how we define the base of the Danian stage. And the definition of the base of the Danian stage and the base of the Cenozoic, which is an important one, goes like this. It is located in wet Jerfani, west of El Kef, Tunisia, and is defined as the reddish layer at the base of the 50 centimeter thick dark boundary clay. What? This is pure lithostratigraphy. There is no awesome definition of the base of the Cenozoic. This is contrary to everything I have told you so far, which is lithostrat is not chronostrat. Well, this is true, but hang on. Actually, the definition of the section itself is not really what matters. The section looks like this. So the section really defines where you want to go to find criteria for correlation. And it's really the correlation that are important. And if you read the article by Molina et al. 20, uh, 2006, what it says is that this GSSP can be correlated by an iridium geochemical anomaly and is associated with a major extinction horizon of both dinosaurs, ammonite, forums, etc. Aha, now we have it. So really the definition of a GSSP is a lithostratigraphic definition because lithostratigraphy is what's easy to spot in the field. So if I now go to LCAF with the definition of this red layer, I know exactly where to look for, for the base of the Cenozoic. So I can put my finger on the base of the Cenozoic. But the value of that GSSP is in the tools that it offers me as a stratigrapher for wider correlation. So let's look in detail at what those tools are. And let's start with that red layer, iridium rich layer. You can see it here at um, El Kef in, in LS in Tunisia in, in point A. That's the KTB or Cretaceous tertiary boundary in red. But you can also see it in India very clearly in photo number B. And you can even see it in New Mexico, where the reddish layer is not so visible in photo uh, labeled C. And in D, again, we see that layer. That is very clearly the KTB, this reddish layer that is rich in iridium. So this layer, uh, this red layer, is apparently a very good marker because we can find it around the globe. And we know how it formed. It's through an impact by a meteorite. And in fact, the fact that it contains so much iridium itself is an indication of extraterrestrial contribution to this layer. And that's actually something that's been known for a few years now that we have in Chicxulub in the Gulf of Mexico, an impact crater. And that impact crater can be seen very nicely on Bouguet anomaly, so in gravity anomaly. Here's a figure from a paper by Salgerado Hernandez um, in 2020. You can see that nice semicircular shape that represents the impact at the end of the Cretaceous that triggered this massive change in uh, the ecosystem. And so that led eventually to this definition of the base of the Danian stage, because it's a massive change in terms of the different faunal succession. And the impact itself created a lot of ejecta. So here you have spherules. These are essentially beads 
of glass. It's at the impact, the rocks were molten and essentially ejected into the stratosphere. They cooled very quickly and they formed those perfect droplets of molten magma that you can find at great distance from the site of uh, impact. But you also have shocked quartz, which are quartz grains that show a twinning that is only possible at very high pressure and high temperature. And so that's another evidence that an early evidence for an impact at the Cretaceous tertiary boundary. And in this map, you see here in red the sites where you can find the spherules and in white the site where you don't find the spherules. And again, the spherules are concentrated close to the impact because they're relatively large. They could not fly all around the globe. But the dust, the fine iridium dust, that one was traveling much further. And that's why the iridium layer in uh, North Africa, in Tunisia, which was a shallow water location at the time, is visible and is a great marker that you can use worldwide. And iridium is not the only thing you can use to trace that boundary there is also a significant turnover of fauna. In this work by Greta Keller in 2011, you can see the position of the KT boundary here in red. This is the uh, red iridium uh, layer. You can see it in blue, the iridium rich uh, layer. And it's obvious that planktic foraminifer biozones do not continue across the KT boundary at the LS section. So we know exactly where the base of the Danian is in this particular section because that's how it's defined. It's defined at this location with the iridium um, peak. And it's clear that we have four species here that disappear before the boundary or at the boundary. And then we have a, a large number of new species that appear immediately after this boundary or somewhat later into the Danian stage. So using biostratigraphy based on what we've defined in the LS section is now possible. You can go and use a core and if you find in the sediments forms that are typical of the Maastrichtian, the top of the Cretaceous, then you know you're below the boundary. If you find sediments or cores with forums that are actually younger, Danian, Danian age, then you know that you're post that particular impact. But notice also here that we have a shift in carbon isotopes. And that's really something interesting because isotope of carbon can be used quite often in correlation for GSSPs and, and uh, other uh, location. So let's try to understand how this shift in delta C13 happened. 